A winter nexus is one of the easiest ways to make hundreds of millions of isk while exploring, and we've got three fits for you, that's three ships, each one made for a certain price range and area of space. So if you want the best EVE Online guides, you came to the right place. Ladies and gentlemen, Loru here, digital advertiser, content creator, and EVE enjoyer. For the better part of 10 years now, and this is the Metamorphosis. And before we talk about the fit here, let's talk about why the Metamorphosis. This is one of those fun ships where it does not have a lot of great requirements, meaning anybody can fly the ship. Because it doesn't have any requirements, it does not have stacking roll bonuses, but instead static roll bonuses, meaning even people with lower skill points can fly this to great effect. But if you have a bunch of skill points, the ships further in this video are gonna be better for you. Now, the stuff that we care about, core scan probe strength and probe deviation means that you scan faster. Increased relic and data analyzers means you hack faster. A better ship core strength plus two innately is nutty and we push that even further with the rest of this fit. And you can fit a covert ops cloak device. It has everything we need. Now the total cost of this fit is 134 million. You're going to get that back in about a half an hour at least I did doing this exact activity. And you're going to notice we don't have a lot of faction modules in this fit because since we're going into low and null sec we're not going to fly a lot of the blingy modules just in case we die, we don't want to lose all of our good isk. Starting off with the highs, we have a Tech 2 core probe launcher. With my current skills, this brings our probe strength up to about 99. Anything around 100 is what you want to aim for for this. And then, of course, we have a covert ops cloak device. This means you're going to be undetected as you go from spot to spot. For the mids, we have a data analyzer. You don't need to bring a relic analyzer, but we do bring a relic analyzer in our cargo. More on that later. A single medium shield extender 2. There's really not a lot of slots here for tank, but you want to have some just in case. And this increases your raw HP. And then finally, a compact micro warp drive. You don't want to go super expensive with these, and they can get expensive fast. We go 3,000 MS almost once we turn this bad boy on. For the lows, a single damage control. We've talked about this guy in the past. It's one of the best bang for your bucks for any low slot. And we are running an inertia stabilizer coupled with a small polycarbon engine housing in the rigs. Now, those two combined are going to give you a sub two second align time with covert ops. This makes you nigh uncatchable. It is a requirement for this fit. Being slippery is how you survive when you don't have a lot of tank. Speaking of being slippery, we're also going to run a warp core stabilizer too. This is going to increase your warp core strength by two, plus the actual metamorphosis's bonus, making it four. A ganker is going to need blinged out faction modules in order to keep you locked down, or a fleet of friends. And let's be honest, if there's a fleet, you're going to be dead anyway. So if you're going into dangerous areas of space, make sure you take the warp core stamp. Finally, for the rigs, we have two small core field defense extenders. Each of these are going to increase your effective HP by 20%. Something that's super slept on with the Metamorphosis is how it has across the board very even resists. Normally, if we're running other ships, we have to plug the EM hole, as in there's not a lot of EM resists in the ship. Not so with the Metamorphosis. So these three modules working together give you a solid 2800 shield HP, 6580 on the EHP front. Now, you are going to run a couple drones. You can only run one of these at a time, but the Warp Core Stab reduces your bandwidth down to only 7.5, meaning you can only run one of these at a time. And that's not a lot but it could be the difference between you living or dying. So if a ganger hops on top of you, lock them up, throw a drone out, and pray they can't get to you. Now, the Metamorphosis has something super interesting about it. It has a mobile depot bay. Yeah, like there's a spot in the actual Metamorphosis's cargo that's dedicated to mobile depots, and not just one. You can bring two of them. Yeah, I know. What the heck? I saw this. I was like, is that a thing? All right, okay, well, I'll take it, I guess, you know? Because of that, you're going to bring some extra modules with you just in case. You're going to bring a relic analyzer too. Because you're going into null sec or low sec, there's going to be some juicy sites for you. You don't need to only do the Winter Nexus sites. So you can refit in space with the Mobile Depot and swap out the Data Analyzer or the Relic Analyzer. Get that good loot? You'll notice some other stuff in here. This is the Pochfin Express. Now we have a full guide on how to use the Pochfin Express. The link's going to be in the description, as well as it pops up at the top right-hand corner for you. It really does need its own video to explain. This video is going to be long enough. Go check that out on your own time. Just know that these four modules will get you in the null sec and get you out as safe as possible. Now, high sec is a completely different story and enter in the Astero. Now, we love the Astero as one of the premier exploration ships, and that's for a reason. This ship is tankier than the Metamorphosis, can warp just as fast as the Metamorphosis with our fit, uses a covert ops cloak, and still maintains that sub two second align speed. Now, we do lose the innate warp core strength, but the Astero has a monster combat probe and relic data analyzer buff. Now, the total cost of this fit is higher than the Metamorphosis. We're taking this into high sec, so we're going to bling out some of our mods. Now, the main reason this is so much more expensive is because of this ligature integrated analyzer. It fits 
both data and relic site modules. And if you don't want to run this thing, you can just run a data analyzer too, and the cost goes down to 200 million. With this, however, you can hit every single high sec data site there is. Now let's just rapid fire some of the other changes here. The Astera is going to run a limited hyperspatial accelerator in the lows, increasing your warp speed. High sec has more competition, so you need to warp faster than the other explorers. These two combined means you're going to get to the site faster and then be able to move out faster. You're not fiddling with this or that. Now the drone bandwidth is a little bit higher on the Astero compared to the Metamorphosis. So you can run two Hornet EC300 drones at the same time. This is fantastic. It gives you another ganking out, but we're not trying to break the bank with all these fits. I wanted to give you something that's very cost effective and is better than the previous ships in a lot of ways. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the Helios. Total cost of this fit is 78 million isk. Ugh, way more affordable. Now you could take this one into all areas of space. But why didn't I lead with this one? Well, because it's a tech two ship, we wanted to make this video as friendly and as usable for as many people as possible. With that said, the Helios gets a crap ton of awesome bonuses. The higher your covert ops skill, the better your probes are, and you get a flat relic and data analyzer bonus here. So to go into some differences here, in the highs, you can run an interdiction nullifier. You have the CPU and the power grid to run one of these bad boys. This is going to make it so if you run into a bubble, you can still get out and get the hell away. Necessary if you're going into dangerous areas of space. The mids look very different comparatively to the last two ships. We do have some tank on there with the shield extender. We don't have as good of a prop mod with the afterburner. We can go just under a thousand MS with this thing turned on. The main differences are the range finding arrays and the cargo scanners. Now the range finding array works with your probe scanner to make your strength even higher, up to 123 with this. Scanning time is going to be way faster with that said. Now the cargo scanner is something super intriguing. You can scan down the various sites and see where the best loot is and prioritize those cans first. Again, if there's competition, you can make sure you pick the one that is the most isk. Finally, in the lows, we got two inertia stabilizers. This is going to get you to three second align time. And if you're seeing something a little bit higher than three seconds, consider blinging out the inertia stabs. There's a bunch of faction versions of this. Having a low align time is essential if you're doing an exploration focused fit. Make sure you get as close to three seconds as you can. We're running a single EM reinforcer in the rigs. Without this, we have zero EM resist, and you want to make sure you plug that EM hole. Final thing we want to talk about is how the Helios has a 9.2 AU warp speed. It is going to get you from A to B the fastest comparatively to all these ships. So which ships do you use when? If you're a lower skill point character, you can use the Metamorphosis. It's going to cost you a little bit, but not be as much as the Astero. You can use the Metamorphosis to go into all kinds of dangerous areas of space, as well as high sec. The Astero is going to be more expensive, have some of the best skills you have, and lets you outmuscle the competition if you have the ISK to buy the modules. The Helios is going to be your big skill point character ship, or really any Tech 2 Explorer for that matter. Use the Tech 2 Explorers to make a ton of ISK, and you will definitely get your money back. Now, super fast, before we give you some other tips, we got some Christmas presents for y'all, baby. We are EVE partners here. That means we get skins to give away to you from the devs. Thank you very much, CCP Games, for that. We are going to be giving away three lucky winners, scope syndication skins valued at hundreds of millions of ISK. But that's not all, ladies and gentlemen. We're giving away Metamorphosis, Astero, and Helios Hulls to a bunch of y'all. We're going to give two or three away a piece. We like to be extra generous during the holiday season. In order to win, you got to do these three things. First thing is got to be subbed. A bot's going to know if you're not subbed, you're going to be disqualified. Second thing is you have to put in the comments, I want presents. The last thing you got to do is you got to put your in-game name in that same comment. I got to know who to send the contract to. You do those three things and check back in a couple days. We'll have announced the winner in the community tab of our YouTube page. And y'all were super close to 10K. At 10K YouTube subscribers, we are going to do a blowout live stream, the likes of which the EVE Online directory has never seen before. So get us there and you'll get even more goodies. Thanks again, everybody. Let's give you some final tips so you can get back out there. Now, here's how you can find all the various hacking sites. Now, the best loot's going to be in NullSec. You can use the Needlejack filaments to port yourself into NullSec safely. These teleport you to random areas in NullSec. So be careful and enjoy that excellently flowing loot. But even if you're not going into NullSec, how you can find the various sites are opening up your Neocom here, going into Activities, Map. You're going to go to your gear in the top left corner here. You're going to scroll down to Geography and Statistics, and you're going to check Metaliminal Storms. Now, I'm filming this a couple days before the Winter Nexus. You're not seeing too many, but during the Winter Nexus, they're going to be all over EVE Online. And see these bubbles here? It's orange, yellow, whatever the heck. Those are Metaliminal Storms. Use the map to navigate to a bunch of exploration sites and go from there. Let's go over some ways to stay alive if you get jumped on by a ganker. So typically, when you land on a site, let's say there's a data node here, you are going to orbit that data node at around 2k off that node. Why you do that is because assuming there's no other collidables around, if a ganker comes in trying to take you out, you can just tap your cloak button and disappear. It's going to be really difficult for the ganker to come find you in the midst of all this other stuff. Another option you can do if the ganker's coming in is you can tap your micro warp drive 
initiative and go very fast away and then tap your cloak to fade. It's one of the reasons why we fit a micro warp drive on the metamorphosis. The final thing you have to understand is that if a ganker locks you down, you pop your warp core stab here and you warp away. You get the hell out of there. You don't try to stay, you don't try to fight. The only other thing you should be doing is locking them up so that you can throw your Hornet EC300 drones on them. But your job, if you get scrammed, is to activate your warp core defense stabilizer, align out and warp out. Now remember the warp core stab only lasts for 15 seconds. So make sure when you use it, that you're ready to leave. This will typically be pretty quick anyway. Just remember, you can't use this thing for another 150 seconds. So if you fat finger the warp core stab, I guess we'll see you back at Jitta, huh? And y'all, we got a ton of winter Nexus focus guides coming out. The playlist of that is right here. You can bookmark the playlist to get all the goodies we have for you. We're streaming Vanguard very, very soon. You can RSVP to that with a click right here. Thanks again, everybody. We're almost at 10K and we'll see you in a future video.